Hello everybody, welcome to Grace Bear Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. We got us an Evil Twin beer that was sent to me by Rico because I refused to purchase any Evil Twin beers and he was gracious enough to purchase it himself and, and ship it to me. Uh, everybody that follows me knows the little correspondence that I had with Jeffy over an overcarbonated beer and uh, he seemed very nonchalant about it, so I'm done with that brewery company. Uh, unless somebody sends me one, uh, I'm not going to buy him. I'm not going to spend any more of my hard-earned money on him between beers. So, he did. He decided to pick this one up. And uh, I don't think it has any kind of dating on it, but he does have a sticker on the top saying it was a 2016 edition. I don't know how he knows that unless he asked somebody at the beer store or went to the website and found that out, which I normally do not do. But, for any, for any information I have here from Rico, it's a 26 edition, 2016 edition of the Evil Twins on Moss Toto Jesus or Jesus, however you want to pronounce that. <clears throat> this is an Imperial Stout, so the month and the day is not critical. I would like to see the month, so I know it's either in January or December of that year. But it's a 26th edition, and I'm reviewing it here at the very last day of May. So it was done sometime. January between January and May. It, it's a 2016 edition. Uh, and he's a vagabond brewer, Jeffy is, and uh, he brews his beers at several different locations uh, on the East Coast, uh, very similar to his brother, uh, McKellar, that brews at different places over in Denmark. Uh, but, uh, like I said, I'm not going to buy any more of these beers from these guys. Uh, they do make some great beers, especially the Imperial Stouts and and their darker beers are, are usually freaking awesome guys, they are. But he's kind of got the attitude, if you like it fine, if you don't, that's fine too. I don't really give a rat's ass. So uh, I've made up my mind that I really don't give a rat's ass either whether I ever buy one again or not. That's the way I feel about it. You got the same attitude? I got the same attitude and I'm going to tell all my subscribers what I think about you. You do make some great beers, Jeffy, but your attitude sucks at hind tit, out loud. So, if that's the way you feel about it, that's the way I feel about it. So, Rico, thanks again, my brother, for sending it to me and spending your hard-earned money because these are not cheap beers. They're very pricey beers. He, uh, he, muck, he makes some great beers, but he charges accordingly, too. Some of their bombers are $25, $30 a pop. I don't know what this particular beer costs, being a 12 percenter. I would think it was at least a $10, if not more, probably between $10 and $15 for this little 12 ounce bottle. So once again, Rico, thank you my brother. Uh, I, I know you want to hear what I, ha I think about the beers and that's probably the only way you're going to hear what I think about the beers because I'm not buying them anymore. He's rubbed my ass the wrong way. He's chapped my ass. And homie don't forget. So, done with Evil Twin unless somebody sends me one. Let's get on with this. Enough about me, enough about him. Let's talk about the beer. This is a, uh, this says here is brewed at Com Campania Conserve del Monte. I don't have any of that. that. Sounds like it's not done in the United States. Uh, but it says here Brooklyn, New York. So I don't know. Not seeing this particular brewery brewing his beer. Like I said, he goes all over the place. Doesn't have a brewery. Vagabond brewer. He goes and, and contracts these breweries to brew his beers. Because he don't have a brewery. All right, let's get on with this. Imperial American Double, I'm Imperial Stout, American Double, 
12% big time beer, monster beer. This will definitely put you in the hammer line fast if you drink this. This is a sipper, not a chugger. If you drink more than one of these, you definitely gonna have your buzz going on. No doubt about it. Uh, commercial description says malt beverage with cinnamon, cocoa nibs, chili peppers, and coffee beans added. So it should have a, a very complex, great beer to sell. Them. But I don't sell her these beers that people send me using unless they send me one or unless they send me more than one or tell me on the bottle sell her this. And a lot of the guys do. They, they'll send me two if they review this one and sell her this. And I do. And, that's, and I don't have a problem with that. But when they, you spend your hard-earned money and you buy these beers and you pay to ship them to me, I'm obligated to do them in a timely manner. Now, I might not do this beer within a week or two since it's a 12 percenter, but then again, I might. It just depends on what's in the lineup. And I start off with, when I do the beer reviews with a lighter beer and work my way through until I get to the darker, heavier beers. This is the final beer of the evening for me, and we'll see where this one ends up. And I'm not, I'm not going to hold anything against Jeffy. Uh, if it's a great beer, I'm going to tell you it's a great beer. And the bottle has no date on it, so other than having the 2016 sticker that uh, Rico has put on it, we have no idea how it is. Now, being a 12% Imperial South, not that critical. This beer is going to keep 10, 15, even 20 years or so. Uh, doing it with uh, cocoa nibs and uh, Chili peppers and coffee, I don't know how much the coffee's going to fade if you try to sell it that long. So, there's some there's some pluses and minuses to beers that's brewed with coffee and other ingredients other than being like a Russian Imperial Stout or a barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout. When they start adding the chili peppers and the coffee beans and stuff, that stuff may fade over time. So, I don't know. It's, I, I'm, not, I'm not selling a beer that's had coffee in it or chilies added to it for a long period of time, a couple of years maybe, but no 5, 10, 15, even 20 years never done it because I know the coffee's going to fade. Now, I don't know how much the chili's going to fade, so just be aware of that. Uh, nothing else we need to talk about there, so let's get over to the food pairing. Cheese is buttery, brie, go to Alberti, Swiss, and since it is a stuff, as well the chocolate dishes, of course, the meat is beef. Smoked meat, game, and grilled meat, glass bright of pint, becker, nonic, tumbler, snifter, oversized wine glass. I've got the Slava beer glass again today, guys. And it says here it can be sold for a long, long time. And I'm sure it can. Just be aware, if you try to sell this beer for a long, long time, the coffee may fade. So, enough talking. Let's start pouring. Not much here. It's just a... Not much. Pitch black coming out of the bottle, guys. And, and like I said, he does some great dark beers. Imperial Stouts, he does an awesome job. He's got that I don't give a frick attitude, and I don't like that. So, if it, if that easy pour, it is just the head is non existent. Basically, just a little bit covering, and I can see the beer through the top. No head. Over to the light, there is none. It is pitch black. Dark as night. Let's get a nose on it. Definitely getting the cinnamon. I'm getting some cocoa. I'm getting some chocolate. The hints of some coffee in there. Definitely some dark fruit. Definitely getting some cinnamon in there. It smells pretty good. It smells very tasty. I am getting a little booziness in there. 12%. It's not super well hidden. We'll see what it tastes like. But definitely getting the cinnamon and the roasted malt. And so some chocolate and some dark fruit. That's what we get. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Definitely getting the chilies on the back end. Nice, little bit nice. Not burning my throat, but the, you will be aware that the chilies are there. Little bit of heat on the back end. That's very delicious, guys. I will tell you. Sad as my heart. 
that I've got the correspondence from him that I did on that bad bear. Wow. That's delicious. He's done a great job on this one. Very, very tasty, guys. Nice blend of the chilies on that. The cocoa nibs and the chocolate is coming through. The dark fruit is there. Wow. Delicious. Like I said, it sad in my heart that he's such a jerk. Alright guys, let's, uh, let's sip on this for a little while. Let her taste it. Go out and hit that uh, Maduro wrap cigar. Maybe finish it up for the evening. Very delicious beer, guys. Another winner, it looks like. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. We're stepping on this about 45 minutes or so. A very nice with the Maduro wrap brick house that I was smoking outside. Rico, once again, uh, thanks again for sending it to me. Uh, I do appreciate it, sir. Uh, even though I have a biff with uh, Jeffy, the brewer uh, for Evil Twin, uh, it's not going to affect my ratings, guys. Uh, whether I have a like or dislike for the brewery or the, the brewer, I'm going to tell you what I think about the beer. This is a very well-made beer. It's a very awesome beer. It's definitely an NA beer as far as I'm concerned. The chilies are there. The cocoa nibs, the chocolate is there. The dark fruit is there. Hints of the coffee. Hints of tobacco. Very well-made. Very nice. Uh, Rico told me about putting on the top here. He put 2016 on the top. It does not have anything on, written on the bottle. So. Whether he went to the, the website and found out when this was done. Uh, it should have a vintage on it somewhere. And that's my biggest beef. But they don't print it. Even if I'm 12%, they don't need to know anything else uh, wrong. Uh, give us a vintage. Write it on the label somewhere. Or write it on the bottle somewhere so we will know when it was put in the bottle. You don't have to put the month or the day. The month would be nice so we know whether we're first of the year or the end of the year. But he says 2016, and this is uh, 31st of May, so uh, it was done sometime between January and May of 2016. Would like to see that written somewhere on the labels or on the bottle. Just me. Uh, very nice, very well done beer. And like I said earlier, they usually do an awesome job on these great big imperial stouts. Very nice. I love the uh, chilies that I'm getting on this. Very. Very nice. Nice heat on the back end. Very well done. I love this quite a bit. And the other half loved it too. It's pretty tasty. Uh, it's a shame that we have these uh, arrogant, but I'm going to say it, assholes for brewers that don't give a rat's ass whether you buy the beers or not. And that's the way he feels about it. So, it is what it is. I guess he's got, I guess he thinks he's got enough people that's going to buy his beers while they're People like me like it or not, or like him or not. So it is what it is. Very nice. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Very well made beer. Very tasty beer. So let's see the final chug. Thanks again once, twice, quadruple, quintuplets. Rico, you are the man, sir. Very tasty beer. Wonderful aroma on this beer. Very, very nice. Delicious. It is absolutely freaking delicious, guys. Not a cheap beer. I'm sure this is a pricey beer, even for this one bottle. It's probably a $12 to $15 bottle of beer. It's a 12%. Costs a little bit more to brew this style of beer, especially when you're adding cocoa nibs and, and chilies and, and, and coffee and, and all that stuff that they're adding to the beer. Very well done. Makes it a little more pricey. And, his, and he knows that, and he prices it accordingly. I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if this was not a $12 to $15 bottle of beer. But it's very tasty, very well made, an awesome beer. Uh, to me, guys, it's an A beer. And I'm going to give it to A, uh, but I'm not going to give it to 10. Uh, it needs to have some kind of vintage on the bottle written on it. So you know when you pick it up, this was done in January 2016 or April 2016 or whenever in 2016 then, you know. So we'll know. You might want to do a side-by-side -side vintage, a 2016 and a 2017, or a 2014 and a 2016. 
side by side. So you need to we need we need to have that information and he chooses not to or the breweries that he chooses to brew his beers doesn't have the capability of doing that. So even though this beer will keep for a long, long time, even though the coffee may fade and the chilies may fade, uh, it is a well made beer. So I will give him that. Uh, very well done. He does these dark beers very, very well. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, 9 out of 10 for me, if I was giving this a rating, it would probably be a 96 or a 97. Because I want to see the date written on something. Instead of somebody having to research that and put a sticker on the label or on the bottle or on the cap when it was done. So It's just me. It's just my OCD, guys. I want to see that information. We deserve that. If you're paying 10, 12, 15 dollars for one bottle of beer, don't you think we deserve that? I do. So, over to Beer Advocate, they say 92 in the outstanding range. It is an outstanding beer. It's a great beer to finish up the evening with, which is what I'm doing here, final beer of the evening for me. And over to uh, Red Beer, Red Beer shows 99 overall and 89 in the stock. So we got a 92, we got a 90, I'm going to say 96 or 97 for me and a 99 from uh, Red Beer. So they're all 90s. Definitely an A beer, guys. Definitely worth picking up if you got deep pockets and you want to buy something like this, not knowing when it was put in the bottle. Now, you may ask somebody at your beer store, even though uh, we just got this in last week, that doesn't mean anything in Virginia anyway. This beer may have been sitting in the warehouse for a year or so. So you never know. That's why we need that information on the label or on the bottle somewhere. So. With that being said, if you've had this beer from uh, Evil Twin, they're Han Moss, Toto, Jesus, or Haces. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. It's very well done. I love the chilies in this beer. A nice heat to kick it up a notch or two. The coffee's a little more to do, but it's there. Hints of dark fruit, caramel, topping, brown sugar, cocoa nibs are there. Everything is there that's written on the label. We just need a date written on the label to or on the bottle somewhere. So, and you know, like I said, he chooses different breweries to brew his beers, and they may not have the capability of doing that. So, that's the price we pay for not having the information, and the price we pay for him brewing his beers and charging an enormous price for them. So, if you like a nice, uh, you could probably buy a barrel aged version beer. For the same price you're going to pay for this little 12 ounce bottle that's non barrel aged. But, just my opinion. If you've had this one from Evil Twin, the Anmoths, that's probably, I'm probably butchering that up. Toto, Jesus, or Jesus, however you want to say that. And they've got the asterisk on the on, on the U and the, and the A and the Jesus. They've got all the asterisk marks to, to throw that in there and, and let you know how to pronounce it. But, Anmas, Toto, Jesus, or Jesus is how I pronounce it. That's probably wrong, but if it ain't, if it is, I really don't give a shit. That's how I pronounce it. So, that's how I read it, that's how I pronounce it, being the old hillbilly country boy that I am. That's what it looks like to me. Very tasty beer, though, guys. Very well done. It's a shame that he's such an asshole. <laughs> but he... This is a good beer. It's definitely worth picking up if you have deep pockets. It's not a cheap beer, I'm sure. Rico, thanks again, my brother, for sending it to me. Very tasty. I enjoyed it. Thank you, my brother. Uh, if you've had this one from Evil Twin, let me know what you think of it. It's pretty tasty. It's, uh, it's nice. A good special occasion beer uh, because it's so pricey. And uh, if you had it, let me know what you think. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Come on back tomorrow. Let's dig something tasty out the bridge.